Midnight. Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, we are officially 39 days at the time of this recording until WrestleMania. But before we get to all of that, we have to start a little bit of an AEW revolution. It's going to be previewing all of AEW, you know, the thing that we kind of never talk about on this show. And more importantly, <laughs> yeah, whoops. And more importantly, it is Sting's last match unless he comes out in a salmon suit so beware folks be on the lookout for the salmon suit we're going to get ready to do a giant homage to sting an aw revolution preview show with one of our favorite canadians but not my favorite mr frets is here to join us on episode number 369 the stinger exclusively here on wrestle addict radio and it starts right now <laughs> You know, I didn't know when I was going to do the, the salmon suit uh, joke, but I figured it was a great time to do it right then and there. So it's, it's oh, yeah, perfect. it's perfect. It's, it's, it's a bit that never gets oh, old and never, it never dies. Does. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 369, The Stinger. I am not The Stinger, nice. but I could nice. be, I, I could nice. be V Mark Henry of the podcast, but I'm not wearing a salmon suit today. My name is King Ricky Rose. Uh, thank you guys for joining us uh, on Russell Attic Radio and Kings of the Rings podcast. Links to all the subs in the description, in the, uh, in the description below. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. We have a pretty interesting show today. We're going to cover a, a brand that we don't often cover, but luckily that's where Fretz uh, comes in to, to cover the stuff that he usually updates on when we do the show on Wednesdays. But here we are with me, uh, as always, a man who is almost going on a year without incident. Be happy about that. Will Tarasak, how are you? I'm going to make it two years. Just you're you watch. You're not making it two longer. years. What's going to last longer, my days without incident or Roman Reigns' title reign? Roman Reigns' title reign still. Ah, oh, that's a lot of days, dude. I can make it to <laughs> no, a thousand. Easy peasy. No, it's what, three no, years? A little, a little, a little you three can't years? At all. You I can't. Can no, you, you I can, cannot. I can you do cannot. it. How much you want to bet? I can I, do it. You're not going to make a thousand days. No incidents. I don't know. What, 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 what determines an incident? You're just going to have to figure it out. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. I'm <laughs> And of course, with us, that's it. Yeah, it's over. Brett's, it's, that's it. That's just wrap to show up there. I can't go a thousand days without incident. <laughs> days are numbered. Yes, they are. Days are numbered. Uh, Mr. Fretz, God, there's a sting mask. Mr. Fretz is joining us. <laughs> it's, it's terrifying. It's terrifying. There's a sting. Fretz, I want you. I'm, I'm, I, I want you to like Fretz. I, I'm serious right now. I want you to dress as Crow Sting every Halloween and just sit outside on the porch with a bowl of candy and just watch the kids be afraid to take candy. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta have the, you gotta have the long wet black hair. <laughs> yeah. and like the dark trench coat and just be sitting on a rocking chair with a bat in your hand and a bowl of candy just on your lap and see who's approaches and, and then if you scare a kid too much take the mask off and underneath is this your face painted as joker sting and this go twice as hard <laughs> exactly what i was gonna do oh my yeah, god <laughs> But friends, how are you? I've lived in this house for like, I'm great. I've lived in this house for 12 years and I've had one trick or treater ever. Really? That's so wow. sad. I, don't live, I kind of live on a highway. It's, ah. it's, as soon as, as soon as you get past my house, there's our town's doctor's office and then the beer store. And then we're getting to the outskirts of Sobble beach. So yeah, I am doing Fantastic. I am some people's second favorite Canadian, Nash, uh, the North American treasure, and I'm not wearing this mask the whole time. And yeah, I'm ready to talk about some. Re it's revolution. That's this this next one. Right? I get all their damn pay per views. I, was, I forget that they even have yes. papers, but yes, it is yes, revolution. Revolution. Yes. It, yes. it is revolution. I, I really feel like you should keep the mask on the whole time, but I know about how that can become very cumbersome. Uh, and everything. So, so no requirement uh, there. So we're going to talk all about uh, revolution and all that fun stuff. But first and foremost, uh, like some of the other crazy people uh, in the world, I myself stayed up all night on Friday up till 5 a.m. to watch Elimination Chamber because I'm, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Thank Good you. for you, Ricky. Yes, I, I, I would have been my youth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm apparently <laughs> I am still in my youth, or just the fact that I'm just not a bitch. Anywho, um, so Elimination Chamber was, uh, was, was Saturday morning here in in the states, uh, and overall it was a good show. I will tell you, uh, Mr. Tarachuk, you did have a clean sweep on the prediction. I had a clean sweep. You got everything, everything correct. Uh, I believe yeah, everything correct. No, I thought I. Who did I choose for first female eliminated? Naomi That's like is on a whim. One thing you messed up on our bonus question. Okay, so, uh, I said Raquel. I said Raquel, you said right? Raquel. Like Raquel's like maybe the only. Okay, thing I, you I, up yeah. I, you know, it was funny. I was thinking Naomi because mm-hmm. I was like, this, this, fuck it, someone's got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I went with Raquel. Yeah, no, you got you got close. Uh, so with with that being said, you are technically in our host lead by three. You have eleven. K and I have eight. Although K is not going to be here for the show, K did leave their predictions uh, for for AEW Revolution. But first and foremost, uh, Fred, were you able to see, were you able to watch Elimination Chamber at all? Tell me your thoughts on it. I didn't watch it live because I work at uh, seven thirty in the morning on weekends. So well, I caught. Yeah. Sorry, I caught about five, ten minutes of it on Saturday, and then I watched, I watched the replay of it, most of it last night. I still haven't seen Rhea versus Nia, but from what I saw, that it was fantastic. The both elimination chambers delivered. I thought the tag team match was well done as well, and even the Grayson Waller effect. It had some funny moments, which I think are going to have a little ripple effects later on. Honestly, I don't know why Seth was out there I, for real. This was Grayson Waller. Why was Seth Rollins out there even to begin with? He didn't do it. Listen, anything. I have that question all the time <laughs> with this Cody. Or not, like <laughs> Seth, why are you here? Like <laughs> Seth, can you just go? Can you can you go focus on Drew McIntyre? <laughs> like I'll be your shield. Stop. Cody's just like. <laughs> I'll be your oh, shield. The thing is, baby. No, nobody asks. <laughs> it gets away the pain. Seb's getting a main event that no one cares for. <laughs> that's the problem. I don't believe in the tag team match. I don't think that's. I don't think, I, I would no. much rather see Rock. Dude, I would much rather see Rock Cody. Absolutely. You kidding me? I want Rock Cody more than Rock Roman <laughs> low key because Cody's going to get his ass <laughs> fucking whipped. It, it's going to be an interesting build for that. I will say about the Grayson Waller effect. Um, Jesus Christ. Austin Theory saying he went to Outback Steakhouse and got a blooming <laughs> onion was a brilliant <laughs> move. <laughs> it was phenomenal. So he- good. Um, so well, what are your overall thoughts on um on Elimination Chamber in Paris? Yes. It was fine. Yeah, I had no I had no problem with it. It was like it was a solid seven, just like I predicted. Clearly, because I got almost every single pick of mine <laughs> yeah, right. He did. Uh I mean, it was totally predictable, but if 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 it's going to be predictable, I'd rather it be in a six sided steel structure. Yeah, because like we, the the story was kind of blatantly obvious. It was going towards Drew and Seth, and then it was obviously towards Becky and Rhea. Now, would would have been better just to do that on Raw with a regular match instead of an elimination chamber and in with an like, actual cage match. So. Predictable, but sometimes that's not necessarily a bad yeah, thing. Yeah, it was it was a solid solid thing for me. I think Tiffany Stratton really showed out. Like she, she had did. a lot of good. They have a lot of good plans it's, for her, especially for someone like me who who doesn't know who she is from NXT. Yeah, uh, they kept most. They kept yeah, most she, of the core of her character. Yeah, she has a presence about her, and I'm not talking about those double Ds either. Mm. I am, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany Stratton is just Tiffany no, Stratton I, is just. The uh, the more athletic Trish Stratus. Yeah, give her give her a year to really hone in on that character, and she'll be fighting for a title yeah. sooner rather than later. She's not she's not gonna make an NXT flop. I think she's one who's definitely gonna make you know, it. I didn't know she was a former like Team USA gymnast either. I didn't either. I was like, Holy crap! I was like, why didn't they talk about this earlier? She's kidding, Liv Morgan in no time. <laughs> Yeah, no, it it was a good overall thing. The um, both chambers were were totally fine. They, I will say this about the men's chamber. They wanted to hurt Logan Paul. <laughs> yeah, that, I thought the men's chamber was actually excellent because the the, uh, the brass knuckles to Randy was just like, <laughs> wow, you just put that man out of his misery. Because <laughs> Randy's doing a really good job selling the back or maybe his back just actually hurts. Mm-hmm. I can't really tell. Um, and then Logan Paul's punch, Randy was just like, oh, thank 
God, <laughs> I can just lay down. <laughs> I guess we're getting Logan Randy at uh at at Mania, which I'm kind of okay with. No, I think I think Kevin Owens pinned him, right? I don't remember. Would you prefer? Would you prefer Logan Randy one on one, or would you prefer like a five man ladder match? For the U.S. With title? AJ, with AJ, KO, Orton, and LA Knight. And then uh, uh, Paul's the fifth. I like the ladder match. Because uh, I like the ladder match too. Cause I'd rather have the ladder match than an AJ Styles and LA Knight one-on-one match. I don't give a fuck about. <laughs> and then what does KO even do? I, I'm kind of wondering how AJ Styles made it to Australia without falling off the end of the earth. That's a good question. Very good question. He does think it's flat. Unan- he does think unans- it's flat, doesn't un- he? Unanswered wrestling's, wrestling uh, questions. Add that one to the list. Uh, last but not least, obviously, uh, the main event, Rhea got a <laughs> Rhea got her proper main event. And as as good as Rhea did, and she did a great job, Rhea, I think this is Nia Jax's best performance that I've ever seen. Yeah, she's she, good. She played the yeah. heel monster perfectly. Yeah, absolutely perfectly, and it's really fun that she's also she was born in Australia. Which yeah, really? which is great. So they had the presser Thursday night, and she was like, "I just want to say I'm so happy to be home with my fellow countrymen." <laughs> That's, <laughs> pretty funny. Booed, That's pretty they funny. The crap out of her. And she's like, "I'm so glad that after I was born, my parents moved me to San Diego." <laughs> 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 that's pretty good, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah no it, it was it was a it was a fun fun event uh from what i've seen from some of the people who we follow or follow us uh on the australian side of things on on our social media they they had a great time seemed like a really really fun the atmosphere. stadium the stadium was go- gorgeous i loved the fireworks so many Yo, fireworks, the sunset too. like during the first couple of matches yeah, it was yeah, gorgeous. Was like, this is dope. There was a there was a gorgeous stadium, great crowd. They were into everything. The stadium's only six uh six years old, apparently. Damn. Yeah, it was fun. It was One a good time. show. I did hear about the re- so remember when Dom was out there and then like they had to kick like Dom away and everything, and it like blacked out the screen yeah. for like a couple of minutes. Yeah. Uh, apparently it was because the entire people in the in the in the front row by him were like flipping him off. Yeah, they hated him. They he it's it's not it's not frequent that the boos are so loud you can't hear them speaking into a microphone. Yeah, it was bad, but glorious, glorious. It was really good. So yeah, elimination. It was really, it was really. Yeah, good. so we got so we've got thirty nine days or no pay per views or PLEs uh, up until Mania. Thank so God. We're, we're gonna have a fun time. But switching gears, finally, the AEW Revolution, which is going to be happening this Sunday because AEW still does events on Sunday uh, in North Carolina. Uh, March 3rd, I think like 8 p.m. I definitely will not be watching it live because I think I have plans. I don't even actually know. Um, So this is one of the original four AEW pay-per-views, which goes with Revolution, Full Gear, All In, and All Out, I believe, were the original four. They now have a couple more, but Revolution happens to be kind of like, yeah, it's Sunday. Um, Mr. Wild P, thank you for joining the show, by the way. Um, so yeah, it is going on uh, this Sunday, AEW Revolution. And the big thing about AEW Revolution that people are going to obviously tune in for is the fact that the man we know as Sting, the icon, or Shivani with, uh, the, and there goes the there goes the Sting mask again. Um, <laughs> or Shivani would like to scream, but it's Sting, even though he really has no voice uh, these days. This is allegedly Sting's last match so we're going to take some time right now to talk about the the, jesus fred that thing is so stretched out um (laughs) we're going to talk about the legend uh did you put it through the wash (laughs) seriously (laughs) you're not it's it's not supposed to be in the dryer it's supposed to hang dry (laughs) that's a thing we're gonna talk about that was good thank you i I haven't done laundry in three years but i know what happens when you do those things (laughs) Uh, so we're gonna talk. We're gonna take some time to talk about the legend uh, that that is the Stinger, um, someone who's a 
think 25 different championships, multi-time world champion. Uh, we're talking about a WCW champion, an NWA heavyweight champion. Uh, I don't remember him holding any titles in WWE. Uh, man's wrestled no. all across the world. Oh, Taquan's here. That's great. Um, man's wrestled all across the world, except for wrestling The Undertaker when they should have had a chance, except the fact that he jobbed Triple H in his own in his only WrestleMania appearance ever, and Seth Rollins almost sent him to an early retirement. Let's not forget about that. Uh, so with all that being said, uh, Fretz, we're going to bring it to you since you are our esteemed Canadian guest. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Stinger and his potential retirement? We haven't seen the Salmon Suit yet, but it might happen. I'm still holding out hope for a Salmon Suit. If I had anything even remotely like that, I would have gotten that out for the occasion for the the mask here so now i've always kind of liked sting because i got into wrestling right around the time the nwo was getting hot or life and his feud or life and his feud with hogan was just getting underway you had all this build mind you it was over a year long because either sting was injured or they were trying to keep this thing on the back burner until starcade 97 the lesser said about the match itself, the better, <laughs> but you know, Sting has always been <laughs> friggin' Bret Hart, Nick Patrick, just that could have been WCW's magnum opus, but that was the beginning of the end for that company, in my opinion, for that. But you no, know, Sting's always been a constant. I saw only a little bit of his TNA run. I stopped, I couldn't watch TNA past like 2008. He's always been a constant. I've always been, you know, a fan of his. I got to see him wrestle live last year at Forbidden Door, and he was pretty ginger, gingerly walking, getting around back then because Sammy Guevara put him through a table. Did he jump off something high? He didn't jump off of anything high, even though the CN Tower was right there. He could have done it. <laughs> In the or in the arena, friends. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> this wasn't the kill <laughs> My God. What what Fretz is sticking with a hard R. Oh my god. All right. That damn one. <laughs> well, I know you took you did a lot of time. Uh I know you you got into wrestling by watching TNA in its heyday. And you 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 prefaced last week that you were gonna have an argument that Joker Sting is the best thing of all time. I need to hear this argument. Uh, I didn't actually write things down. I was just talking bullshit. Well, I'm calling I, you out I'm, I'm, bullshit. I'm a big I'm I'm a big fan of Joker Sting. Is it the greatest of all time? I mean, I think I think uh Crow Sting at least that 97 run doesn't really do much. <laughs> <laughs> like, just be real. He kind of freaks out Hogan a few times. There's a lot of confusing, confusing things with Randy Savage. Like, and then they blew the ending. So, crossing to me, like, that 97 build was kind of overrated looking back. Um, I never I never experienced Surfer Sting. Apparently, the Surfer Sting was really cool. So, People like Surfer Sting with the blonde hair. I get the it. 80s buzz cut. Little yeah. Stinger. I get it. I'm not going to argue with you. I don't know anything about um, NWO Sting, Wolfpack Sting, Red Sting. Not a clue. And then I don't know Main Event Mafia Sting either. I got introduced to Sting with Joker Sting. Really. Um, and it was just the greatest thing ever. It was just this old man <laughs> acting crazy. <laughs> And having fun, because you know why he committed. You know, like people love Stardust. That's why I feel about Joker Sting, because he it was a shit gimmick that he really committed to, and he made it his own, and he just went for it. <laughs> so I'm a big fan of Joker Sting. I'm a big fan of a Stardust gimmick too. I thought Stardust was fantastic. I, I, yeah, Stardust, not a fan, <laughs> but I respect it because Cody fucking went yeah. for it. He just he he tried his best to make chicken salad out of chicken shit. And uh, Sting made gourmet chicken salad out of just regular ass chicken salad. <laughs> yeah. No, it was crazy. Um, oh, wow. Jesus Christ, the con. Anywho. Um, so, yeah, no, Sting has gone through a lot of phases. The interesting thing about Crow Sting is that it wasn't his idea to do it. It was Scott Hall's. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Scott. Scott Hall's like, hey, yo, I think you should. He's do like, you ever, crow. you ever see the crow? You should do that. Completely just ripped off the crow. Yeah. Just, just stole the gimmick. <laughs> got away with it. <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm surprised they could have seen it. Jason Jason Lee died. What was that, Fritz? The guy who played the, guy who played the crow? Right after the guy who played the crow, Jason Lee, died on, on set. 
Oh. Yeah, the movie was cursed. The movie was like cursed. The movie Crow is cursed. Yeah, and then all of a sudden you have Sting in the Raptors and coming down from the Raptors in a harness like every other week. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, the the crowd pops. The crowd loved it for the time, and it was cool. But looking back, it's just like, okay, the story makes no sense. Yeah, it makes this this makes it zero sense. Like Sting is just playing mind games. And he didn't speak. And there's no payoff. And he didn't speak. Yeah, and it just makes no sense. Up up until like October '97, because they're building in December, then it starts making sense. It's like okay, Sting is clearly targeting Hogan, but he's kept in his will they won't they mm. for most of the year. And it's like we don't know what to do here. It just puts Sting in there and have him drop a bat and just walk away. <laughs> yeah, and that's what they did. They put a crow. They, they put did. a they put they an actual like skirt. vulture in his he hands. They put like a bird of prey in his hands. Remember those times? He's up in the rafters with like a giant bird. He had a cage. No, I think. Okay, that was. I think the bird was actually out of a cage. You're right. It was out of cage. It was on like a little, little like wooden stick thing. Yeah, a perch. Like a perch. He took a falcon. A perch. Yeah, it was. That was fucking awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Let me not. Let me reiterate that. How fucking awesome that was. Yeah. That still holds up. Yeah. And like the rafters, they're like coming off the rafters thing still holds up, but. Him and Randy Savage are just kind of standing in the crowd just for no reason for like a month and a half. <laughs> and then Randy Savage just turns and goes joins the NWO. And Sting, okay, I guess Randy's not my friend anymore. Yeah, and it just and makes then, no sense. It just makes no fucking sense. It's weird. You know the crazy thing about the Sting run? What's going on, Big Hurts, by the way? Thank you for joining the show. Um, we just talked about Jagger Naya, Big, Big Hurts. You, you totally missed that moment. Anywho. Um, totally put her over. We did. I, I did at least. Oh. I, agree. I agreed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um the crazy thing about the crow sting era and the first like will they won't is that he actually didn't say anything like for like almost a half a year like he literally yeah. just his job every week on nitro was to go to the rafters and just stand there oh no it was it was a year and a half was it a it year and a half like, of no speaking we're we're talking like he turned he stopped being like surfer sting or whatever sting around it was 90, right after the su- NWO form. Summer, summer 96. It was a few months after the NWO formed. Sting is like, he's just like, you guys can eat me and so held up his hands, but not the middle finger. Yeah. And then he just walked out. He's like, you guys can bite it. And he just walked out. And a few weeks later, he came back as surfer sting and hasn't talked since. Yeah. So it was, it was summer or fall of 96. Which is wild. Talk about the easiest paycheck in wrestling ever. Yeah. Just stand there. What do I do? Stand there. What do I do? Stand there. Okay. Oh, you know what it was? <laughs> it was after War Games. That makes sense. It was after it was after War Games because Team WCW had the Sting, and then there was like Fake Sting. That's when Fake Sting came in. And oh, no, that was later. That was the following year. Never mind. There, there... Well, Fake Sting was ninety six. He did he did come in in ninety six. Ah. Was Fake Sting the Surfer Sting? And then well, it became Crow Sting. Oh, the the fake Sting was always a fake Crow Sting. So after it was always a fake Crow Bort- Sting. Okay, got it. It became the Crow. Then yeah, yeah. So, so it, it, it it was about war games. Or- yeah, it had to do, it had to do with war games, which is why Sting left WCW and became the Crow. It had to do with it had to do with war games. Yeah. I forget the exact details. No, no, anyway. it was crazy. So yeah, no, he has an illustrious career. I think Sting, Sting, and uh, I believe Sting and Flair were the final WCW match ever too, as well, which is yes. kind of a crazy thing to see before. Flair but, had a shirt on. Yeah, for not for long. <laughs> um, for for um for WCW before it got taken over. Sting obviously does not go over to WWE immediately. A little bit because of the contract. Sting has said multiple times in interviews that he didn't like the way that he thought the WCW. Uh, performers were getting treated on air by by Mr. McMahon, not Vince, Mr. McMahon, when he had that promo before Shane comes up, like, what should I do with all of these characters? Do you want Goldberg? Do you want Sting? Blah, blah, blah. That apparently pissed off Steve, who's <laughs> was Sting's real name, and Sting was like, I'm just not going to do it. And that's that's why it took him to, you know, he had his TNA run He until 2014 when he might, well, he might arguably have, outside of The Undertaker, the greatest debut in WWE history. It's just a shame it was on Dolph Ziggler. Which was <laughs> also, like, the Dolph greatest, Ziggler. my favorite Survivor Series match ever. Like, yeah, it's, it was I, I so it, good. It was so good because it wasn't Roman Reigns at the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that's, that's why so it was true. so good. 
if it was Roman Reigns and Sting debuted, everyone would be talking about how Sting's debut was ruined on Roman Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. It was perfect. And then Sting had his run. And then we were like, oh, we're finally going to get Sting and Undertaker. And then we got Sting and Triple H, which wasn't a bad match. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's, it's everything sucked. about it from taking place during the day to also Triple H problem. being Terminator and the match <laughs> being during the day. <laughs> yeah. And then the NWO coming out, which is also kind of DX. And <laughs> Sting, like traditionally, went up, was main enemies with the NWO. So why is your main enemy, bl- black and white NWO, what have you? Yeah. Um, Defend their biggest enemy. It just, all of it was just, and then he lost. Yeah, that was the worst part. He lost. <laughs> and then he fucking lost. Oh, did I mention it was during a day? Like, <laughs> yeah. Everything about it was just wrong. Taker <laughs> was during the day, too. It was, I know, Bray Wyatt and Taker were during the day, too. Yeah, yeah. West Coast Mania, what, what are you going to do, right? <sighs> you wait. You start <laughs> You start it later. At least Rusev was during the day. because He the came tank out of the tank. Yeah. And still lost to John yeah. Cena. Yeah, John Cena buried two. He got banging in that tank, so good for him. You got what? He got the bang longer in that tank, so So that's true. Good day. I think he said it that he like either before their match or something. They apparently did it in the tank. Oh fuck yeah, they did. Actually, baller move. I I appreciate that. You telling me you wouldn't? (laughs) (laughs) I didn't. I didn't know that was a thing. Innuendo, still. Listen, it happens. No wonder she was so happy walking out in front of that tank. Makes a lot of sense to me. Anywho, so Vince Sting's career obviously falters in WWE uh, due to many reasons. He goes to the Hall of Fame, and at the Hall of Fame, at his Hall of Fame speech in Dallas, he retired. He goes, I officially retire. And then AEW shows up, and he apparently is unretired. All of a sudden... I forgot. Well, what... he had to re- he had to retire because of his neck. Remember, he had like neck injuries. Yeah, yeah. Like, and then AW is like, "Hey, we'll let you wrestle." He's like, Sting "I'll do like, it." Oh, you will. <laughs> I'll. Do... Let me check, let me check the dog. And the doctor's like, "You're cleared." Yeah, so it was during uh, what was this? During winter is coming. I think yeah. it was, and then <laughs> snow started falling from the ground, from the sky, not from the ground. Um, and Sting comes out and <laughs> that'd be, that'd be a that would be crazy. Probably the craziest thing I've ever seen on AEW. And I saw the ex- I saw <laughs> the exploding barbed wire death match. Okay. <laughs> and that was pretty uh, wild. Oh. Yeah. Um, I said crazy. I didn't say good. Although there are things that are crazy in a good way. Anywho. Um, so he comes out. He he has his run. He's being traditional Sting. Tony uh, Scavani is losing his mind. And his voice every week that Sting comes out. Uh, he apparently then, uh, and this is obviously the clip notes of it, he adopts Darby Allen as his son. Uh, they're like the masked people together, and they just do crazy shit all, all the time. And then a couple of months ago, Sting said, hey, I'm retiring at Revolution in North Carolina. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Currently, Sting and Darby Allen are the AEW Tag Team Champions, by the way. Um, which is going to be Sting's final championship in all of pro wrestling, so we think. But before we get to that, and before we get to continue on with Revolution and start a Revolution prediction with the most obvious answer that Sting is losing um, this match, we're going to go around the room right now. We're going to start with you, Fretz. What is Sting's lasting legacy? Fretz, I think it's... Sting, ver- no, I'm, I'm thinking for a minute. I, I think it's the uh, the Hogan feud, to, to to me at least. That's that'll be his lasting legacy. The whole pointing with his bat from the rafters, he's and pointing at me, drop- and, <laughs> and and dropping down at Hogan. Some people may say surfer. I mean, I'm of a certain vintage. I'm turning forty in two months, so you'd expect me to say surfer Sting, but I wasn't watching wrestling when surfer Sting was a thing, especially not WCW. Sting, all the time. Uh, there, there goes that really stretched out Sting mass. I love it. Well, Terror Shock, what's Sting's lasting legacy? Uh, loyalty. Mm. Sting, Sting is one of the most loyal people and wrestlers in the history of professional wrestling. He refused to leave a sinking ship. He stayed with WCW to the very end. He stayed with TNA 
longer than he should have, longer than he could have. He had plenty of offers to go to WWE, and he always turned it down, I think, out of pure loyalty. he I, I, I think to a fault even at points at times. Yeah. And now he's loyal to AEW. The one place, ironically, he wasn't loyal to was kind of WWE. <laughs> <laughs> Which, and, I, and honestly, I respect that too. Like, you know, he was someone who says, I'm always going to go with the, double, the underdog and help them and try and elevate them and lift them up for the betterment of the business. And I think wrestling needs that. Wrestling needs a top guy to bite the bullet and go and try and build another, like, organization promotion is to compete and keep the wrestling world interesting. As much as Ricky, you and I share on AEW, they have made WWE so much better. And I sincerely want AEW to, to um, thrive and succeed to make wrestling better. And how they do that, I think is exactly what's going to happen on Sunday. Yeah. I, I think this is a work. Oh my God. I think, I think this, I think Sting is retiring, but this is the beginning of a retirement angle. And oh. Darby Allen is going to turn the fuck on Sting. Don't. And then it's no. going to, that's going to be the final feud to end Sting's career, like two matches against Darby Allen one on one. Interesting. And that's the end of his career. That's what I think that's how you can get eyeballs in AEW. And people go, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Sting is. Sting, Sting's retirement match was a red herring. The fuck? What? Yeah, I think to like yeah. I'd, I'd I'd go and watch that what that, that feud. I think Sting's last match should be a one on one. Can can but here's the thing: Can Sting actually wrestle one on one? He has another one on one match his whole run run in AEW. I don't think he can. Like he's, so, he's up there. Uh, it it is. That's what I want to happen. Yeah. But yeah, Sting Sting's legacy just loyalty down to the bitter end. Yeah. Wherever he is. To Quan to Quan put it really well: Sting is the WCW, what Taker is the WWE, what Dreamer is the ECW. Yeah, thank you. Loyal to the end, loyal to a fault. Uh, and one half of one of the greatest what ifs in wrestling history, which I kind of like the fact that it's always going to be a what if. We all wanted Sting Taker and we never got it. But I like that. I like kind of that intrigue of a what if. What's the bigger what if? Sting Taker or Goldberg Austin? Sting Taker. Sting Taker. You think so? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Goldberg. Austin yeah, no, is no. Sting Taker because Austin remember, can work. Goldberg is not the best worker. Fair. Remember when people thought it was Sting? It was like you saw those. What wound up being Undertaker Undertaker vignettes for I think WrestleMania twenty eight or twenty nine. It was one of the Triple H ones, and you saw this twenty eight probably decrepit house. It was it was this old decrepit house on a creek or something, and everyone's just like. It's st- but it was it was Taker Triple H, and I think is when Taker ha- first had the Mohawk, and they used the Memory Remains by Metallica and Ain't No Grave by Johnny Cash. The Quan saying it was twenty seven, which is actually a good Taker Taker Triple H match, very good Taker Triple H match. That was the first. That was the that first was no holds barred one. Was, right? That was no holds barred. Yeah, in the in the worst Wrestle in yeah, one of the worst no, WrestleManias no. ever uh, in Atlanta. I I, I skipped that. That's one. the I, that's the I, Snooky one. <laughs> yeah, I bought 24, bought 25, bought 26 without hesitation. 27, I was like, man, The Miz? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and the rest of the card just wasn't that intriguing. And I haven't missed one since. Yeah. I still do this day, I've not watched 27. It's serviceable. No, don't bother. I guess it's serviceable. Watch, watch Taker Triple H. Yeah, no, Taker Triple H is great. That's the one where they both can't move and then they do the Hell in a Cell the next year at 28 with, God. with Taker and the Mohawk. Yeah, it's that God. one. God, with Shawn near- Michaels. Yeah. yeah, that is that is some of the best story. That and Jey Uso Hell in a Cell with Roman Reigns is some of the best storytelling. Listen, that super kick pedigree combo to a false finish. Um, and Shawn, like, losing his mind. Yeah. Like, his brain's coming out of his ears in the corner. He's about to fucking cry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing, dude. We were all Shawn Michaels. <laughs> in, like, the audience was Shawn Michaels. <laughs> yeah. He was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm so scared. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I respect you, but you're my best friend. What do I do? <laughs> so many decisions. Done now. <laughs> One, two, no. <laughs> Oh my god, future! <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. And then next year he lost to Redacted. Yeah, yeah, he did. Anywho, um, so yeah, no, that is Sting's legacy. Hopefully this is final hopefully this is the beginning of the end, if not the end at all. 
It is going to be a sight to see, especially when he drops to the Young Bucks of all people as his final opponents. As you can see in the graphic if you're watching us live, but Young Bucks have really taken the douchebag EVP thing to the umpteenth level with the worst looking suits ever and horrible mustaches because it's a little bit too long. Um, they obviously, they beat up Sting and Darby Allen after they won the tag team titles from Big Bill and Absolute Ricky Starks. They beat them up in all white suits. They made them all bleed and there was blood on their suits. And then they wore the bloody white suits the next week on Dynamite. Like sanitation hazards all over the place. Uh, this is going to be the, this is going to be for tag team titles. This is obviously going to be the main event. It's Sting's freaking last match, allegedly. Um, 3 two, one the Young Bucks are winning, which will be really fucking unfortunate um, for this to happen uh, as, as things think. But do we have any commentary on the fact that this is potentially the last match of Sting? He's not putting over, it, he potentially might not be putting over a talent that needs it like Darby Allen, um, but he's just giving it to the Bucks. I wonder whose choice it was. <laughs> That's a good, that is a good question. Apparently. Right, like if like if, if Sting said I want to wrestle the Bucks, I have no problem with sure. it. Obviously, right? Yeah. That then at that point the creative team finds a way to make it work, and TK finds a way to make it work. Um, also, like if you're gonna go out as a tag champ, you want to face the best. Who's the best tag team in AEW? I mean, whether you like it or you don't, it's the Young Bucks. It's not even close. Yeah. That's... They're, they're, they're the best tag team that isn't the Usos. <laughs> That's true. Can you imagine the super kicks in that? Yes, I can. <laughs> and one day, I really hope we get it. I that would that would be crazy. Uh, uh, Fredsy, what are your what are your thoughts on this? I'm assuming you also have the Bucks winning. Obviously, and now that Will has put the thought of heel Darby in my head, I want to see it. It, it, it's interesting to, have, to potentially have healed Darby. There's a little bit of a rage that I think Darby needs. He can go all like, yeah, I, w- I thought you were my father or something. Like, I want him just to go like totally ballistic for no reason. Just have total delusions of grandeur that he thought like Sting was his family member. And he's totally just you're leaving me. Yes. So the big question here is Do Darby without the face paint. Sorry. I don't know if we want to see Darby without the face paint. I'm just so used to him with face paint. It'd be so weird to see him with that. Um, but here's the big question. Here's a little bit of bonus question for us. We're going to have a little fun with this prediction battle. Over under, with an over under of two, Will, how many super kicks will be performed in this match? Over under two? So if I get it within two, I'm right? Yes, correct. Oh, man. Mm. Four. Five. Five. I'm going to go with five. 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 Okay. So I got between three and seven. (laughs) Yeah. Fred's, what about you? Fifteen. You said fifteen? My lord. Thirteen. Oh, thirteen. My lord. Jesus. I'm going with ten. I hope Sting hits one and he has... Like dislocates his hip. <laughs> he, <laughs> and that's it. He that's goes for the first super kick of his career and breaks it. He's like tears his ACL. <laughs> yeah, breaks his leg and it's all over. <laughs> it's all, that's how he. That's yeah, it. That's it. That's it. That's, it. that's all, folks. <laughs> all on. Dude, I might buy the pay per view after the fact just so I can see. <laughs> <laughs> like, That'd be great. Oh my god, Sting literally breaks a leg on his way out. Is this on BR Live or is this on like traditional pay per view? I think Bleacher Report. I think it's pay per view and BR Live. I'm not exactly sure about that. It's on Bleacher Report. It's on Fight. Yeah. Other question here. Um, in regards to this match, will Sting jump off something high? Yes. I'm got to go with yes too. Uh, is, it, is, it, any- is, the, is the top rope considered high? No, higher than the top rope. Mm. Oh, Tony's gonna make it a cage match tomorrow night, and then it's tornado the tag. Box. Yeah, dude, he's gonna do it twice. Come on, <laughs> give me up for a second. Tornado tag means there's no tags. It's just it's just a match. Yeah. Anywhere. Yeah. 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 He's gonna jump off the um the uh the the balcony the uh the like the walkway where they the, where the seats are and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
that thing. Then he'll break his leg. Yeah, the, 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 the new Jack spot. Yeah, then he'll break his leg, <laughs> and then finish the match and super kick him with a nut. What is what is good leg, and then he'll lose. Dude, <laughs> I don't know because he couldn't put his weight on the broken leg. He had to super kick him with the broken leg. <laughs> That's true. He like you gotta have to. This guy's gotta swing it at him. <laughs> He like just totally rips off his kneecap and just throws his leg at him. <laughs> just totally just loses it for his final match. Oh my god, the buy rate for that would be absolutely insane. Uh, but the Bucks are winning. Yay, I guess. Uh, moving on to what I actually think is going to be a fucking great ironic semi-main uh Samoa Joe the AEW world champion who has a really massive forehead I saw on one of watching Dynamite uh versus Swerve Strickland versus Hangman Adam Page who stock dropping massively on Hangman Page this man was getting booed out of the building multiple weeks on Dynamite this month wow. booed out. it's probably because of a stash again too what is with the Young Bucks and whatever the elite is these days and these mustaches is this like a is this like a thing that they're trying out Dude, Hangman looks like he's been stuck in the rain for three hours, <laughs> just knocking on the door, and his wife just can't hear the door knock. <laughs> and she's opened the door, and that's what she sees. <laughs> a fist coming straight to her face. Like, that is how much he, he looks like he has right now. <laughs> it's just, he's, he's just, like, he's, I don't know, he's just kind of tiring at the moment. Um, Here's the thing with this match. So, w- what happened was, beginning of the month, uh, Swerve Strickland, Hangman Adam Page, who have been having some crazy matches, Texas Death Match, if you guys remember that from Full Gear. Uh, they had essentially a number one contenders match, uh, through 30 minute time limit, apparently no rules, as they were going through tables, and the rep was barely doing any counting out of anything. <laughs> um, they start off Dynamite with number one contenders match, uh, and they go to a 30 minute draw. Okay. They go to a 30-minute draw, and they're both like, yeah, too much taboos. The AEW likes to bring back the time limits, 30-minute draws. This works storyline-wise for this. And so they're both like, we want to keep fighting. We want to keep fighting. Give us five more minutes to keep fighting. And then Tony, Tony Schiavone, I keep on trying to call him Scavion, but I know he's not Scavion. Shivani gets up from the announce table and goes, oh, yeah, I have a message from the anonymous Raw GM known as Tony Khan saying, by the way. He did not say anonymous No, he did not. Raw he did not. I, I added that. I, added I was going to say that would be, God, hilarious. <laughs> but it's the, the, it's the concept of the anonymous Raw GM, even though we know it's Tony Khan. So instead of. Tony Khan, who has every title known to man in AEW and ROH because that's what he freaking wants, doesn't decide to just walk out and make the match himself. He messages Tony Schiavone to do it for him. He texts Tony <laughs> Schiavone to make an announcement. Yes. Hey, man, can you just like announce on TV what's going on now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's essentially what happened. All that is yeah, sometimes sometimes Michael Cole be like, I'm hearing in my ear from so and so. But no, 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 a text message. <laughs> <laughs> you think it was WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger? Facebook Messenger, definitely face, Facebook. Every Messenger. Facebook Messenger, <laughs> Facebook the Messenger. worst of all the messengers. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely Facebook Messenger. I will tell you this. Samoa Joe's a great champion. Samoa Joe deserves to be a world champion all the time. He used kick. Wow. <laughs> wow. I remember kick. Um, yeah, Samoa Joe's a great champion, but Swerve Strickland outside <laughs> of Timeless Tony Storm is like the hottest thing going on in AEW right now. Swerve Strickland has built himself up to like a superstar status. And my official prediction for this is Swerve Strickland. Also, one thing, because he's the hottest guy going on in AEW right now, but here's the other thing. AEW can do something in with that within about five years and some change that took WWE over 50 years. They can have their first African-American world heavyweight champion in record Put it on time. A black guy. What's up? Put it on a black guy. <laughs> But see, that's something they can hang over when they talk about we want to give people opportunities and diversity and all that yeah, stuff. They sure. approach. Here's your opportunity to do it. <laughs> like, yeah. Here's your opportunity to do it. Um, Samoa Joe's a great champion. I think he did his part for these last three or so months, but I think you got to put it on the hot hand. 
Um, Hangman Adam Page is here just to, I think, be a foil. I don't think he's winning at all. I think Swerve is the perfect choice right now. You have everybody and their mother doing that stupid-ass dance in the crowd all the freaking time. Have you seen the Swerve dance, Will? I have no idea what you're talking oh, about. Oh, you need to. I want, I want Fretz to explain it to me. Go, Fretz, go right ahead. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Yeah, it's, yeah. Swerve when you drive, swerve when you drive and so on. Yeah, how do you feel about that? Oh my god, <laughs> uh, I, I don't, I don't know what. To do. <laughs> and I think there's a. Bit of I don't know. Yeah, it, it's a lot. The... Uh, am I am I doing it right? <laughs> no, no. this in here too, and I, I'm, no, I'm, I'm old. I'm, I don't do TikTok anymore. It's not so. even a TikTok dance. Yeah. It is literally like the dance of AEW. So you know how like WWE used to do fandangoing, and we would be freaking idiots in the crowd. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad that didn't catch on. <laughs> it caught on for a while. <laughs> caught on for a while. About it that. was an iTunes number one hit. Um, this is the <laughs> same thing, but everybody looks good doing the Fandango dance. Not everybody looks good doing this dance. I'll put it that way. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to look bad. It's going. Da, 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 da. Yeah, everybody looks bad. But lo and behold, my official my official uh, prediction for this, even though I like Samoa Joe, seven, I think Swerve should be the one to to win this championship match. Well, what is your official prediction? Um, I'm gonna say Samoa Joe hangs on to it just to be different. But everything I've heard from Swerve Strickland, because I still listen to Matt Men podcasts who watch and talk about AEW and a few other podcasts that still talk about AEW. So I'm kind of I'm kind of in the know what's going on with AEW. I guess unfortunately all the time to watch AEW. Um I hope to get back into it. Because if Swerve's on top, I'm a big fan of Swerve Strickland. Yeah. And from what I've heard from him, he would hundred percent deserve that title. So if he wins, I'll celebrate. I'm happy. But I'm gonna pick some more Joe just to be different. There you go. Who's your prediction, Pratz? First off, um, Hangman is going for the Magnum TA look with that <laughs> tag. <laughs> Good call. He's got, Good call. He's a he's. I think he's a big fan of Magnum. That being said, I don't think Swerve or Hangman are walking out of this. They're gonna just beat the crap out of each other. And there's always been this bit where Hangman's like. I'm going to prevent you from becoming the world champion. It's not going to happen as long as I'm living and breathing. They're going to be pounding the piss out of each other, and Samoa Joe is going to take advantage of it. And and Very hang well. on, I do think Swerve is going to be the champion. I don't think it's happening here. Interesting call. I like the idea though, like because Hangman clearly can't get over it because Hangman came out the other day, other week on Dynamite, and was like, "I had you beat. I had you beat." And Swerve's like, "I've already beat you twice." <laughs> like, why are you still complaining about this? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, why? <laughs> Fair, man. Yeah. No, it, it is pretty crazy, but I think it's going to be a good... It's like Seth to Cody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is ironic because I think Darby Allen dropped, seemingly dropped Cody's name the, uh, the other week in his promo. It was kind of, kind of funny how Cody still lives rent-free. He was he was Darby dropped name dropped and called him the the good EVP. <laughs> Green. Yeah, uh, crazy stuff. The other title, other big world heavyweight title match is timeless Tony Storm, who's a riot. <laughs> okay, Tony Storm. I love that graphic. Who's who's the guy behind him? I forgot what his name is. Her. But it's 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 pretty much her like handler, her like butler or whatever. She's she's golden era Hollywood. I know, dude. She's Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it, and this look at this graphic. It's fucking incredible. no. But so her entrance is in all black and white. I love it. Every like anytime she like she wins or her promo packages are in all black and white too as well. Facing the the newest signee to the women's division, the most recent signee to the AW women's division, Diana Perrazzo, who had a that's Luther. Thank you, Mister YLP. Um, Diana Perrazzo, who got who was in NXT for a while, kind of had a shit attitude, got released, uh, went over to Impact at the time, made a big name for herself in Impact, uh, left Impact, and signed with AEW. The big storyline here is that apparently uh, Deanna Perrazzo and Tony Storm at one time uh, were were best friends, especially in Japan. They have matching tattoos on their leg, and uh, Deanna Perrazzo is mad at Tony because Tony has changed, and she's different and thinks she's really fucking delusional. 
Uh, that's kind of the story going on here. Um, it's kind of like the scorned friends trying to fight each other for the world title. It's the best matchup they have from what I've seen. One of the only highlighted two women in the women's division. I don't know where the fuck Britt Baker has been these days. Uh, Where's WeHo? In- what was WeHo? It was in Japan, and she's apparently coming back like next week. Right. <laughs> so until then, we have Dan and Tony. It's a pretty, it's a pretty easy, easy done thing. The coolest thing I saw here is that they had they walked past each other on the ramp, and will you enjoy this from a TV's perspective? Uh, Diana was in color on half the screen, and Tony Storm's side was in all black and white visually. Oh, that's really cool. I mean, they walked by, they walked by they, in the same shot, or in the same shot, so they looked at each other, and so Tony's side was in black and white, and Diana's was in color. I wonder how they did that. It was it was on the fly too. It was like during a live. That's really cool. It was a really cool visual. Like that visual alone, I was like, oh, this sold me on the fight. I'm gonna watch it now. Um, as much as I like Diana, there's something timid about how she's presenting herself. Cause she had this whole gimmick in, in impact as the virtuoso and like kind of a holier than thou thing. And she's she just seems very twinkle toesy, kind of nervous energy uh right now and like she hasn't fully brought that character out and tony's just in her element um and tony's just so freaking entertaining so freaking entertaining she throws shoes she uses tit a lot um (laughs) just freaking hysterical so i think tony retains this is going to be the beginning of a longer feud but i think tony retains in this matter mr frets Absolutely, Tony. I'm I'm with you there. Diana hasn't gone full virtuosa quite yet, and you know Tony's she's only been champion for a few months, and there's still a lot of steam. I think with this timeless gimmick, it is it's pretty much my favorite part of AEW is the, is that gimmick. Like, and Mariah May is freaking hilarious. On top of that, they did her and uh, Soraya did this. Knifey spoony bit straight out of the Simpsons, just oh. test kiss. Oh yeah, Soraya's still around. Totally forgot she about played. her. Yeah, yeah that's that's a deal. Yeah, that's very true. Well, Tarasak, are you going timeless with us? Yes, agreed. I mean, look at the graphic. She's the one who looks like a star, and Diana Prado just looks like I looks looks like, looks like she's confused. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, what am I looking at? <laughs> Is it over here? Is it over there? But yeah, no, I think there's like a threat set. There's still steam in the in the timeless Tony gimmick. Uh, and this is going to go far. All right. Now, Tony Storm is the anchor of the women's division. Um, mm-hmm. And she should be that way until we find someone big enough or bossy enough to take her down. As I say, especially since Mercedes is coming in. Potentially. No need to change the title. Yeah. No, it's it's pretty much confirmed. She's going to be in Boston like in a few weeks. You mean Boston? Town? Signed in January. Boston, Town, exactly. <laughs> Uh, next match is a is a title that Orange Cassidy still holds. Orange Cassidy apparently being the international champion, he becomes the ambassador for for AEW all around the world. Uh, apparently, he went back to Wembley Stadium to help promote All In, which isn't happening till August. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's six months from now. More than six months. Um. Well, yeah, it's going to be six, a little less than six months from now. He showed up at Rev Pro, so on and so forth, but he's going to put his title on the line against, again, what is with the stashes, AEW? I'm just noticing this now. He's going up against Roddy Strong, who is a part of a faction called the Undisputed Kingdom, which is essentially the Undisputed Era from NXT and the Kingdom from ROH and Matt Taven. So, yes, it's an ROH and AEW faction with Adam Cole, Matt Taven, and everybody else uh they've been targeting uh orange castle which i will say is a horrible promo like an absolute horrible promo i'll explain to you he was doing a backstage segment with renee and renee was like oh hey orange Cassidy, we heard you were injured are you clear to wrestle like uh like i feel fine but like here's my doctor he's gonna tell you everything <laughs> i was i was like oh jesus like i get i get you're like the cool guy but jesus christ like Learn to work is a mic. the Orange Cassidy gimmick with the fake kicks, is it wearing off? For me, it is. Yes. For me, it is. It, it's wearing off. Uh, but not wearing off enough that he's going to drop his title to Roddy Strong. Like, that's 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 where I land this. I think Orange Cassidy retains. 
because there's no one else to take this title of him that seems to be any sort of credible. Maybe give it to Hangman Page if he falls out of the main event scene. Um, I also do like Orange Cassidy's theme song. Like him and the best friends. Really, really like it. But it's pretty much the the Undisputed Kingdom going against going up against the best friends and Orange Cassidy. And this is remember his theme remember his theme song was Where Is My Mind? What Orange Cassidy? I don't remember that one. Yeah, it was it would whatever yeah. it was the uh the endings, the the credit song to Fight Club was his entrance music. <laughs> really? Yeah. Not really well, weird. Now it's Jefferson Starship. My God! Yeah, I I don't remember that. Tony just buys pop music, <laughs> not pop music, just classic rock music, and it's like, here, this is your theme song now. Yeah, right. Uh, well, is is Moxie still Wild Thing? Yes, it's still Wild Thing. Dude, that was I think that was when I was like, I can't believe I'm watching this show still. And when I when I heard Moxie do Wild Thing, I was like, wow, he really liked Major League the, <laughs> the baseball movie. <laughs> Was like, damn good make movie. my heart sing. <laughs> <laughs> It'll make my butt sing. Like, it's a good song, but not. Moxley's other song was so fucking kick ass. <laughs> yeah, not for a walkout song. Um, yeah. But, like, I get it. Like, he is from Ohio. You know. <laughs> Wait, Mr. Wild P is saying Cassidy's an honorary member of Chaos in New Japan. I guess. I, I God, guess. N- nerd. <laughs> where's, my, where's my nerd button? Hang Where, on. I'm find do, a nerd do you have button. a nerd button? No! <laughs> That's great. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> have you made your decision that you're going with Cass with Orange Cassidy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why not? Look at, look at those shades. Again, I get AEW. Too many mustaches, too many atoms. There's a lot going on. <laughs> There's a lot. A lot going on. Fred, are you going with the with the uh, with the orange punch? No. What? Oh, oh man. Well, first off, musta- all heels have mustaches. Look, Simon Gotch just turned True. up in Impact Wrestling and attacked Josh Alexander and had a good match with them, by the way. I think it's time to get the title off of Cassidy. The whole act, I think, is wearing thin and there's been all these promos where, you know, the undisputed era, that's, I'm going to call them that, I refuse to call them anything else, wants to start collecting belts. I don't think everyone is. Like, mid-low ain't touching shit, but Roddy's going to get it. Roddy's going to get it here. He could, he, and maybe he'll give it to Adam Cole. Maybe. Like, 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 to, like Andre the Giant gave to DiBiase. <laughs> Someone's got to talk in that group, and Adam Cole's the per- perfect person to do that because you ever see Roddy Strong speak on a mic? It's not great. Mm. <laughs> it's not. Is Kyle great. O'Reilly back? What if it happened? To I him? don't know what happened to Cool Kyle. Gosh, stop that! <laughs> oh, who cool Kyle is? He's after he had like major, some kind of major fusion surgery. It was intense. Oh. Like he's still. A long ways away from coming back. Like his Instagram is full of all of his recovery. It's it's fucking brutal. Listen, we'll know when Cool Kyle returns. This is going to play. They're going to start doing um that Creed song, Sacrifice. They're gonna, my Sacrifice is going to be playing. Oh, God, I hope so. <laughs> oh, my God. The greatest recovery song oh. ever. <laughs> Ricky, did you, speaking of Creed, did you see that the full version of the Super Bowl commercial? For, pa- for with, Paramount uh, Plus? Yeah, with, with Patrick yeah, Stewart. With hey Arnold <laughs> and Creed. Yeah. So, Dude, the full commercial was like two minutes, and it is the most ridiculous thing I have ever seen. <laughs> and I, st- but I wish they played the full version of the Super Bowl. And I still won't buy Paramount Plus. <laughs> That's fucking commercial. I still won't buy Paramount Plus, but you know, it's like I am going <laughs> higher. Actually, that's a lie. I might, I might do a trial subscription to Paramount Plus just to watch the new Halo season because Halo is a freaking great TV show. Oh god, Abs- my friend, absolutely great. TV my show. friends, the Halo, the Halo like perfectionist hated the first season. You didn't like the first season? I didn't watch. Oh, it. Okay. my friends who love Halo just dis- dis- despised it and i was like that's a damn there's shame. an interest there's a lot of master chief butt in it which is kind of weird but that's another story for another time moving on from this oh yeah there's another championship match going on that nobody really remembers hey manny um so we have eddie kingston who's the continental crown champion 
Um, what the f- what? Because remember, what does that mean? Because remember, he won the Continental Classic, and so he now is the AEW Continental Champion, Continental Crown Champion. He also is the NJPW oh Strong God. Champion, as well oh as the God. Ring of Honor World Champion. You know, Ring of Honor, that's oh that thing you can't find God. on TV. Ring of Honor, yes, that one. So we have Eddie Kingston three belts, and also the reason that K Mer- the kayfabe cannot get any internet working at any time in the Bastard. last four months. Um, it's putting. As I'm assuming he's putting one title on the line, the Continental Crown Championship against Brian Danielson, who was just essentially doing side crests before he freaking retires at this point. Um, I have no information on this besides the fact that I like Eddie Kingston. I've interviewed Eddie Kingston. He's a great guy. Brian Danielson. Fickle as can be, great performer. <laughs> you know, this is a pick em for me, but I'm always, always going to pick Eddie Kingston pretty much over anybody because I wish Eddie Kingston the best in everything that he does. Fair. Got to follow the heart on this one. Yeah. Uh, I'm totally going Brian Danielson. <laughs> it's, what my, it's what my gut tells me. And, uh, yeah, I love Eddie Kingston, but having three belts – from three companies that are like completely irrelevant. The Tony Khan needs to learn the lesson of the man makes a title. The title doesn't make the man. Title, the title doesn't make the company either. It's like, stop yeah. doing this. But according to our chats right now, um, it is, oh, I know you, Manny. Hey, Manny, what's going on? Um, According to Taquan, the Contest of the Crown Championship is a merger of all three titles. So all three titles are on the line, which makes me want to which makes me want to switch to Brian Danielson because Brian Danielson just wants to do everything in the world now. Um, but it's going to stay with Eddie, I think. I, I really think. Fretz, what about you? You're going with Eddie, or you're going with Brian Danielson? Danielson, I think, is on his retirement tour, and you know, ROH is the place that made him. So why not hold the quasi ROH title one more time and then put over someone on Honor Club where no one's going to fucking see it? Oh, I got that's right. Honor Club is still a thing. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Oh, my God. But hey, anyway, folks, let me tell you guys about Manny really quick because I totally just remembered who Manny is. So Manny. So remember, I think a couple of years ago, well, when we did a WrestleMania Super Show. Um, we always had the breakdown of what the real, what the go to, and everything. We talked about, um, we talked about, hey, April Bumps here too. We talked about, uh, WrestleMania access before it was called WWE World and all of that. So, this guy Manny saw our video. He was going to WrestleMania for the first time. By the way, thank you for your service. He's a, he's a former, uh, military person. Um, former member of the U.S. military, uh, but he was going to WrestleMania for his first time, and apparently our video was very informative to help him make a decision about going to Access and all the other events going around WrestleMania, so that's how we know Manny, by the way. So, hey, Manny, thank you for joining us. I think it's the first time he's ever been on a live stream, and also, obviously, thank you for your service, sir. Moving on, uh, AEW Revolution, number match on the card. There are, like, eight matches on this card. I kind of miss when we do WWE Predictions. It's not only, like, five matches, but there are eight. We have... W- there's more? Yes, there's more. Why? <laughs> yes, there's more. <laughs> Why? There you go, folks. Yes, there's more. Oh, okay. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Will Ospreay, who is... Fully with AEW, which means he's still in New Japan. Uh, was fully signed with AEW, apparently now, going up against Kanosuke Takeshka, who is part of the same faction that Will Ospreay is, the uh, the Don Callis group, the Don Callis family. You know, the guy who tried to end Kenny Omega. His, he's part of the Don Callis family faction in AEW. And I want to talk to you about the reason for this matchup. By the way, Kanosuke Takeshka just beat Jericho on Dynamite with the walls of Jericho. Jericho submitted cool. to his own finisher. I forgot Jericho was in that company, we all did. to be honest. We all did. <laughs> do, they still, do they still play Judas? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yep. Do, they, do, they, do they still sing Judas? Yes. Yes. Yes, they do. Um, so, Don Callis wants his two people two two members of his faction to fight because in this is this is what he said in kayfabe in dynamite he goes 
When I was young, my father had a drinking problem, and every time after dinner, he would make all of us fight, and we ended up fine. So this should happen for, for, for these two guys as well. Number one, that's parental abuse. <laughs> but what? That's the reason. <laughs> that's the reason he gave on TV for these guys the fight. <laughs> And he's like, we're only going to be better for it. I was like, Jesus Christ, Don, go see a therapist. Go see a therapist, Don, for the love of God. With that being said, this is the Will Ospreay highlight match. Will Ospreay's winning this match. Will, besides the inherent trauma that this match might cause, who do you think's winning? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I'm going to go with Will Ospreay as well for every reason you just said. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, when I heard that. I will say, when I heard that, I was like, you've got to be, like, how did this pass? Like, how did that logic pass? <laughs> um, anything. But, Mr. Fratz, are you going with Osprey as well? Obviously, yes. I know you're a big fan of Osprey when you saw him at Forbidden Door. It's one of the things that you continually talk about. Um, he's got trauma. Apron Bum says, because I just want my faction to have the spotlight would be too easy of a story. Yeah, that really would have been just the story that you could have told. But instead, they went they went with that logic. Moving on. Yes, there's more matches. Uh, everybody's favorite daddy, not so much. Christian Cage putting his TNT title on the, on the line against Daniel Garcia. Here's the story behind this. Danny Garcia was facing Edge. Over number one contendership. Oh, Adam Copeland. Sorry, you can't call him Edge. Uh, the rated R superstar Adam Copeland for potentially a shot at the TNT title. Uh, Christian and his hating dadly family shows up, beats both of them down, gives Edge a concerto, and pretty much writes Edge off of TV. Danny Garcia is challenging Christian Cage, or he got awarded it by the anonymous Raw GM known as Tony Khan, a title match. For Christian Cage. That's the story about this. So Danny didn't actually earn the title match. He's going up against Christian because that's the match that they said they were going to give him. That's pretty much it. As much as I love Daniel Garcia, and I think he's going to be a great thing, Christian might be their best heel in all of AEW right now. The man has heat for absolute days. And if the meme you showed me, Fred, is true where he mentioned... I think he went to Danny Garcia and he mentioned an, an address in like Connecticut and someone looked up the address and found out it was a cemetery. Brilliant. No, I got brilliant. I got it. No, it was, um, it was SRS that came up with this one. So take that with any kind of, oh, salt so, you want. so it's, so, you know, but it's not true. It, oh yeah. Like, hey, Daniel, do you know a Jackie Garcia whose address is two Baker street, Buffalo, New York? cemetery mind you i don't think his father his his mother is dead but his father is hence why christian is feuding with him because apparently having a dead dad's a gimmick yeah yeah it is um so with that are you going with christian or you go with danny garcia frets oh i am going with christian but there's a small small voice in the back of my head that is thinking edge might turn heel and join no 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 no. they're doing their match later probably in toronto next month Ooh. but christian yeah it's dynamite in toronto and this time i'm not going it's fine the only thing i want from from christian and edge is a five second pose they could be they could be on the oh st- my god yeah yes. they can be they could be on this they could be against each other they can be like a tag team Give me a random gimmicky at this point indie rific five second pose in the middle of the match. Sold. Absolutely sold. <laughs> After the cameras go off, just for the Toronto faithful. Yes, yes. Everybody's going mad in the chat right now. Daddy issues are thank goodness gracious, folks. Everybody, go seek therapy. It's online. Better help or something. Guys, help yourselves out. Uh, because I can't do it all for you because you guys don't pay me enough. Will Terra Shock, are you going with Christian here? Yeah, I've also heard great things about Christian. Daniel Garcia literally looks like he's trying to be a stripper, and they just turned him down. That is a stripper dance. And that is a stripper dance. Like, yeah. the hands and, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he looks like the stripper even girls don't want. Um, <laughs> so, Christian. I'm going to go with Christian because people love Christian. Look at him. I see why Vince didn't like him. He was right all along. <laughs> uh, great. He's just been 
like from what I've heard, it's a crazy heel. So I've always been a Christian fan. I'm a peep. So I'm going with Christian. Yeah, gotta gotta love the peeps and the peep show. Uh, moving on. Yes, there are more matches. <laughs> On this card, there's two more. Yeah. There is two All more. Right, Ricky, let's, let's speed this up. Let's speed this up. <laughs> Listen, again, this is another match that was put together because they went to a time limit draw. Again, whiskey is not a replacement for therapy, Danny. Jesus Christ. Anywho, um, not with that attitude. <laughs> drink responsibly. <laughs> really? <laughs> drink responsibly. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. Yeah. Possible. Yeah. It's hard, but possible. <laughs> you have FTR. Going up against Moxley and Claudio Castanoli. Again, this is a feud happening because they went to a time limit draw. That's pretty much what's occurring. They used the time limit draw gimmick again for two different feuds. Do I care who wins? Not really. For shits and gigs, I'm going to... Interesting. Yeah, for shits and gigs and probably for the sake of my own sanity, um, I'm going to go with Moxley and Castanoli on this one. Well, who you got? Um, is this the match just because, or is there a belt? Or no, it's a just because match. Just because. Um, I can go with FTR. Okay, I like that. for the Republic. <laughs> what? <laughs> FTR catch for the, the Republic. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right, the new catch Republic, <laughs> Mister Fretz. Who are you going with? Well, I'm thinking there's going to be a stipulation to this match. Maybe it's going to be like a 30 minute, uh, what is it? The a 30 minute, 30 minute Iron Man match or something like that. It's a Most John falls... Moxley can't bleed match. If John Moxley blades, it's he loses. <laughs> <laughs> he'll sneeze and it, he'll like sneeze and it's over. So what <laughs> <laughs> sneeze is this is for? It's such bleeding. <laughs> First blood match. Chew. <laughs> no, I'm I'm going with the. Uh, I'm sporting the BCC. Obviously, I got the Regal BCC shirt like literally a month before he came back to the WWE. What a catch! So, oh, what a- that was my first dynamite. That was a good. One. That was without the elite and everybody. That was after brawl. Literally like weeks after brawl. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna nice. go for the BCC. I'm going BCC. I think there's going to be a stipulation whether it's ultimate submission or. It's going to be a dog else. collar match. Watch. It's going to be a dog collar match. There's four of them. It's going to be a dog collar match. God, what a <laughs> mess. <laughs> See, that would be such a mess. I'm telling you right now, it's definitely going to be a they dog did, collar match. They did it with the, didn't their Briscoes and FTR have a dog collar match? Yeah, they, they've done people? it before. Yeah. It was, a fucking bang. Oh, son of a it was bloody as all hell. And <laughs> last. But not least, much to Will's applause, and much to the chagrin that Kayfabe, K. Murphy, is not here for this, Tony Khan has made the first ever Meet Madness match a triple threat between Lance Archer, who I haven't wow. seen on TV forever, Powerhouse Hobbs, and Wardlow, who actually put on a damn good promo on Dynamite last week and made a lot of valid points. Actually, he talked about all of your former world champions and your best in the worlds. I already decimated and beat, and I'm the only. Re- it would be, it would be, you know, uh, something for me to to actually have a homegrown talent actually win the AEW World Title for once. I was like, you got a lot of good points there, Wardlow. Um, so he made me a a, a believer in this, but this match is literally named Meat. Madness. It was like it was made for K, and K's not here to commentate on this. Uh, I'm not gonna lie; it's probably the best thing Tony Khan's ever done in this company. <laughs> what a what a match! I actually want to now. I want to see this match. Meet Madness match. There's three big fucking huge dudes yes! going at it. Yes, sounds so gay, but it's perfect. <laughs> Meet Madness is. Absolutely amazing. This needs to be no holds bar, no disqualification, falls count anywhere. Like, I want this to be the most insane match of all time. <laughs> and it should open the show. Definitely needs to open the show. Just two, three big meaty men slapping meat all over the well, arena. Well, it's, it's better than the, oh, yeah, they actually work here, man. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's true though. 
<laughs> like, when's the last time I thought about these three people? I not in a long time. You. Not in a long time. But but Meat Madness? Dude, you got my attention. They need t-shirts for this. I will buy a Meat Madness shirt. Like, all right, so... Well, we do have a soundbite for K, actually, Queen. So you want to play? Yeah, we should yeah, be playing I got that. It. Yeah. Where is it? I got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's pull it up, please. It was meat slapping majesty. I'm also going to probably, this is probably going to be our match of the night if we still did that thing. When we review this card, it's absolutely going to be match of the night. So if we do, all right, so well, if we do go to Brazilian barbecue when we're in Philly, we need to buy Meat Madness shirts or create Meat Madness shirts. <laughs> uh, dude, there's a strict dress. Well, not strict. Well, I know, a dress I know, I place. know. But we should still probably. We can do. We can do. We gotta do tanks, wife theaters. We can do them under. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we'll we'll know. We'll know. We'll know. We'll know. No one else will know, but we'll exactly. know. Exactly. <laughs> Meat Madness. Ah, oh, I don't even care who wins. I just want to be entertained. I feel like I'll be. Yeah, I don't care who wins I want to be at all. But sports entertained with this. But Wardlow Wardlow sold me on his. Uh, on his promo a couple weeks ago on Dynamite, so I'm gonna go with Wardlow. Who you got here, Will? Uh, I'm go with Powerhouse Hobbs because I used to call him Will. It used to be Will Hobbs. It was Will Hobbs. Yeah, so Powerhouse Hobbs, go my fellow Wills out there. <laughs> One love. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Including Will Smith, although he'll slap you with that one love. Um, Fretz, who do you have in this? The inaugural Meat Madness match. This needs to be an annual thing, by the way. I need Meat Madness. It needs to be a pay-per-view. Yes, Meat Madness. AEW Meat, meat madness. madness this Sunday, 5 o'clock. Honestly, big, big. honestly, they should call it March Meat Madness. I like alliteration. <laughs> March Meat Madness. Mm-hmm. Do a whole, and do a whole. And, and the, the main event is the big dick Dugly appreciation like match. <laughs> you need to do, they need to do, they need to do a meat madness tournament. Like March Madness, do meat madness. Have the big. Meat madness. Meat madness. Tournament. Who is the biggest, who is just the biggest meat stick out there in the, on the roster? Yeah. And then create the, create like the big meat belt. I don't know. They have enough belts. You can add another one at this point. Uh, dude, whatever, whatever, like the diamond fucking ring was that mjf had oh, just dynamite do it for diamond? that instead the dynamite diamond <laughs> dynamite yeah diamond. whoever wins meet march march meet madness wins the dynamite diamond oh my god all right and here back as we should go frats what do you got for it's us? a full pound of diamond or whatever yeah. make shit up the, 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 the belt is just a humongous steak yes like a flintstone size steak yes with a strap on <laughs> yes you get a whole Just cow that. like Rock used to punch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's made from leather, isn't it? It's made from real leather, so it's going to be literally a cow. Don't have a cow, man. Um, this match needs more people. I wouldn't mind seeing Miro getting slotted into this. He fits. And I he forgot he existed, too. We literally talked about Rusev earlier. Yeah. He coined, <laughs> I think he coined the term <laughs> meat. Has. Did he? I think he started the meat, the meat madness. I hate. He should at least be the special. I hate that we're talking about this like this is an actual like pop culture phenomenon. It is in wrestling. That's true. <laughs> and, you, and you have one half of the OVW tag team champions. I know they don't have ties with with them, but it's a man who literally has beef in his name, and that is my boy, Big Beef Gnarls Garvin. Why not bring him in for it? Meat, meaty invitational, what you just said earlier. Make, make it <laughs> what about it cheeseburger? Eats. Yes, <laughs> yes, cheeseburger put in? a cheeseburger. Yes, I want cheeseburger as a part of this. <laughs> right. Yes. He's me too, man. Cheeseburger needs to be a part of it. He needs to be the open. It's like he he's the 16 seed against the one seed in the tournament. AC <laughs> Romero, get him in there. Let's have a go um, against Paul White. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Paul White in there. Paul White. There, there's, there's some more meat. It, it needs more people. It needs more meat. This, this is literally Big E's idea from the bump, like it is. two weeks ago. It is. It is Big E's. It, it is. It, it's oh, it's literally Big E's idea. You got to Well, you have to get the soundbite of uh, Big E going off about big meaty men slapping meat. It's one of the funniest things in the world. 
Okay. You gotta find it. I'll find it. I'll you gotta find it. it. But we, we we've we've been we've been going off about this book. Like big beat so Yeah, me. it's great. It's from the New Day podcast. It was awesome. Fretz, what is your God, out of con out of context, this conversation is very different. Yeah, we're gonna have to clip this like crazy on our social media. Oh <laughs> but Fretz, what is your official official uh decision here? My official decision here is uh Wardlow lost his smile. He's lost his smile promo. It's gonna be Wardlow. All right, Wardlow it is. And get that round of applause ready, Will, because that is everything on the AEW <laughs> Revolution I, I can't believe you didn't leave with that match. Fuck Sting. <laughs> the Meat Madness match is the real main event. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so happy that this is actually happening. Uh, oh, yeah, one more bonus question. Um, since we are, since this is AEW, it's the land of the bleeding people. Um how many matches? This is an official question here. God, oh, I hate. You. How many matches will in will have blood? How many people? How many matches are going to have bleeding involved in this? Kayfabe. I will. How many matches are there's there? There's a lot. Um, eight one, matches. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, ten. There's ten matches. Let me double check. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. Um, one, two, three. That was good French. Nine. By the way. Well done. Great I took idea. I took French in in high school. Didn't didn't last though. But it's there's nine actually. My fault. Nine. Nine matches. Okay. Shit. Um. Kayfabe has said there's going to be three. So at least a third of the card is going to bleed. God damn it! I was thinking the same thing. Three. Okay. Matches or participants. Matches. Matches, mm -hmm. not participants. Six. That's a lot, Fretz. Fuck. That's a lot. God damn it, Fretz. Um, I'm going to go with three. No over under. It's got no be over under. It's got to be exact. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with three as well. I'm stuck between two or three. I'm going to go with two. Yeah. I, I'm going to go with two. I think, I think two's the same. But I, YLP's going with four. That's a good that's number. That's a great number. Psychopath. Anything's possible in AEW at this point when it comes to bleeding. There is no sting. I, all right, Sting's bleeding, like the the Sting and Darby Allen and Young Bucks. There's gonna be Ric well, Flair might bleed just watching just by that. being there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, I, the bleed crying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, oh my god, he's crying. No, he's having an aneurysm. Like somebody help him. <laughs> no, do you have to be a participant in the match? Like, so Flair bleeding cannot be a part of a match like stipulation unless flair gets involved for some odd reason he was seen talking to the young bucks a couple of weeks ago so it could happen but that's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis we'll review it when when the time comes uh be but as it may it's now time to crown this godforsaken potentially four hour pay-per-view with one crown being the worst thing in the world 10 crowns being the best thing ever how well do you think this paper will be this sunday um aew revolution we're gonna go with you mr frets how good do you think this pay-per-view will be with it being sting's potential last match i can give it a solid let's say 7.75 okay well you're dave and us <laughs> that is that is a that is a that is a big dave move Dave that move. is a big day move. Half, half, sir. Half is fine. But seven five two five, man. Didn't, didn't, didn't Dave seven point seven five us a couple of times? I feel like he seven point three seven us a few <laughs> times. <laughs> he did something. He. It was one time I was like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> I was like, Dave, pick a new number. I remember that. <laughs> you were like, we're not <laughs> doing this. We're not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Dave. That's too absurd. Pick a pick a real number. <laughs> One decimal I don't care point. If it's a fucking prime number. <laughs> an actual whole number. All right. So what do you go with? What are you going with? Will? <laughs> uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go with a solid seven and a half. I'm gonna go. I I don't expect much from AEW. Although, listen, if Meat Madness goes as crazy as I think it's gonna be, it's gonna bump to like a nine real quick. <laughs> Just based on that <laughs> one match. <laughs> fair yeah okay sometimes sometimes it's a one match card man sometimes it's a one match <laughs> yeah card. i i think here's here's the problem i think aew is building this around sting and i think that's going to overshadow everything else on the card unfortunately i think they're going to mm -hmm. and 
It's warranted, yes, because it's Sting, and he is literally an icon of the industry, and he's everything that you think he is. He's really tall, too. I met him in person. Um, Like, a really big huge. dude. Yeah, he's a huge man. Um, huge. He's everything that, he, that you think he is, and a little bit then some. However, I think it's going to overshadow it to an unsavory point. Like, I think they're going to do too much of highlighting Sting's retirement. That it might take... How much footage... Here's the thing, though. How much footage can they actually use? I don't think it's going to be footage. I think it's going to be a, a bunch of, like, old-time wrestlers coming out to congratulate. Like, it's going to be... Te- like, testimonials? Yeah. Or like, a video It's going to be a thing? lot okay. of that, but I think it's going to overshadow the night. Again, does he deserve that? Yes, he does. But there's other things on this card that deserve the spotlight as well. His thing, you do that, um, you do that on um, the weeks building up to the pay per view. So like this week, you do you you no you you. I'm saying the past six weeks they've announced this. They announced this match like six months ago, right? So you literally got to be like starting th- two months ago, three months ago, once a week. You just do a vignette. Like remembering Sting building up to the pay per view, and the pay per view is about the match, not the actual story. Like you save your, he's saving his storytelling for the pay per view if he does that, which you're not supposed to do. You're supposed to finish the story at the pay per view, correct? And build it in the weeks building up. So like it's like how the Hall of Fame they always mm-hmm. announce one or two, yeah, like the weeks coming up or um, return vignettes. Mm-hmm. They they stagger them through a few weeks. Yeah, like you gotta do you gotta do that and build actually build everything. Yeah, and I don't think they're going to do that. So with that being said, unfortunately, this has the potential to be at least an eight. Um, potential, but I think it's going to go to a seven. I'm going to go to the low number. I'm going to go seven on this one uh, with with this. I hope for the best, but I, I know AEW's track record, especially with sticking the finish. Again, I present to you the exploding barbed wire death match. Just watch that. Let me know, Let me know how you feel about the product after that. Um, so that being said, we have come to the end of the show. Once again, I want to thank Mr. Fretz, uh, for being a part of a show on such a last minute because Eddie Kingston, uh, took out Kay's, uh, internet yet again, such a shame, uh, being in Queens. So Fretz, the floor is yours, sting mask and all promote what you want to promote. Uh, go right ahead. Yeah. So you can follow me on. Twitter and Instagram and the other socials like um, Freds and Blue Sky when I remember to use them at Fretzelmania, F R E T Z L E Mania. I am doing Such a, a dick pod- Fretz. <laughs> Not Fretz, I mean Will. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can't help it. It's, it's, it's tech. Go ahead, Fretz. Yes, um, I do a podcast. I'm currently covering the Attitude Era in the year 2000. And this week's podcast, pending that I actually get time to record it, will be my 150th episode Woo-hoo! on Wrestle Attic Radio. So, oh. I've looked ahead. I've watched actually a bit of the show. May Young gets put through a table. Not that time. There's another one. God damn it! Yeah, yeah. We built. I'm uh, Fretz. I'm so jealous that you can stick to watching week by week because I keep telling myself I'm gonna go back and <laughs> like, watch the Attitude Era. I'm stuck in April '97. <laughs> I'm just I'm stuck there. <laughs> I guess I haven't gone. I haven't touched it in months. Your dedication to rewatching everything is impeccable. Yeah. Spoiler alert, I might be doing 97 sometime in the future, so Ooh. put a pin in that. I got a, I got 97's a Bret Hart's fun, story. dude. 97 is really fun. So when Bret Hart's actually good, and um, ECW is coming up there, and did I mention Bret Hart's actually good? Yes, you did. You did mention Bret good. Hart's okay, actually good. good. So that, and then it ends with it ends with DX. Put it that yeah, way. Yeah, break it down. Anywho, uh, ready to get out of here and start going to the post show? I'm going to go old school on this outro, too. It's going to be great. Oh God! Yeah, it's you, you some people will know what I what I'm talking about when I get there, but we'll we'll yeah. you'll see. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about, so I'm gonna find out. You will. Wait, you you will in a second. Should I play a Jericho music? No, 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 not that old school. <laughs> <laughs> fucking tell you that fucking song. <laughs> God. Do not, Jesus Christ.
Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 369, The Stinger, because Sting, the icon, is going to retire this Sunday at AEW Revolution, pending he doesn't show up in a salmon suit. Of course, I've been your host, King Ricky Rose. You can find me at Ambassador Biggs across all social media outlooks, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, some people's DMs, less people's text, text messages. Ambassador uh, Biggs, there it is. There it there is. It there is. it is. Ha ha, ha ha. Someone's laughing in the comments. Um, <laughs> find the Kings of the Rings podcast at KOTR underscore podcast across all social media outlets. Like, share, subscribe, leave us five-star reviews. Listen to us wherever you listen to all your podcasts by subscribing to Wrestle Addict Radio, the cure for the common rest for the common ah the cure for the common wrestling podcast uh which is home to the ylp podcast mr ylp was here in the chat fretzelmania podcast he was our guest on the show and the brace for impact podcast which reviewed tna genesis from 2009 recently in our most recent episode the links to all of that are in the description below including some of our fantastic merch again links to all of that are in the description below shout out to everybody who was in our chat uh people from our discord hall of famers are in our chat as well it was a really really fun time well tower shock yeah, man, we got we got a great community, guys. So if you made it this far into the podcast, you know, hit that subscribe button. If you're watching on iTunes, Spotify, or YouTube, you know, hit that like button, subscribe, follow the show, join our Discord. Discord is a lot of fun. Um, we just bullshit back and forth with each other, and there's probably about 25, 30 of us. It's a good place to hang out, talk some wrestling, and shoot the shit. So join us; it's a lot of fun. We do a good time here. Fretz, you're one of our OG first fans. Um, you in the top five in terms of order of actually knowing our fans. So you are an OG and my brother. Can't I'm so happy we get to podcast together. Yeah. Anything else you have to say, Frats? Well, it's it's all. Oh, no, it's it's always fun to come on here. Uh, you no, know, even if even if it's a last minute deal and you caught me on my night off. You're I, welcome. I love it. I love, <laughs> I love the network. I love podcasting here. And yeah. It's always a good time. Anytime you want me. Absolutely, because we built stars here. Take that, AEW. When we come back next week. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Listen. We did, we did create a banana. <laughs> we did create a banana. We did. We did. When we come back next week on the show, uh, maybe I'll have a special guest. We're going to return to one day's for maybe the final month ever um we're gonna talk about aw hopefully sting retired hopefully a lot of people bled hopefully there aren't that many super kicks from that and hopefully all of you guys return for our 370th official episode so until then folks goodbye good night we'll see you soon it's a big canadian show this week so i do have to end this with one canadian but i just absolutely detest it's you slack fuck you slack <laughs> I forget he's Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, hey. yeah, we'll see you soon. This has been a Wrestle Attic Radio branded podcast.